Buenos dias. What's better than a hot summer day? Right. It's yesterday on a hot summer day. So today I'll show you how to create a beautiful Mediterranean courtyard scene in Blender with a nice fountain in the corner, which is perfect for a nice siesta. After modeling the basic structure, we'll fill the scene up fairly quick and easy with some pre-made assets just to save time. And to top it all off, I'll show you how to add a realistic water effect using particle system rather than Blender's sometimes finicky uh, and frustrating fluid simulation. And at the end, I'm gonna give you another tip on how to add an extra bit of oomph to your realism in your scene. So stay tuned for that one. Now, without further ado, let's hop into it. So we'll start with a fresh scene. And first we're gonna add a plane, which I'm gonna make five by five meters and right away apply my scale. I don't run into trouble with modifiers, textures, or anything else. I'm gonna call this ground. And that's pretty much it for that, except that I wanna throw a subdiv modifier on it. Mm, subdivision surface. I'm gonna set it to simple and adaptive, and that will help me with the displacement later, later on. So next I'm gonna add another plane. Make this five meters by 2.4 meters, rotate it on the X. And I'm gonna select vertex snapping, move it up and over. And same thing, I'm gonna apply my scale and I'm gonna add a solidify and the adaptive subdivision surface. If you don't have the adaptive subdivision surface, you gotta go under cycles render settings and switch from supported to experimental. And then this should appear. And you should always make sure that this modifier is at the bottom of the stack. But if I move my solidify under, it switches back to the regular subdivision surface, which is not what we want. We want the adaptive. Because the adaptive, the way it works is it determines the level of subdivision depending on the distance to the camera and that saves us a lot of memory. And we don't have to add that much geometry to a given surface or a given mesh. The only thing I got to do here on those walls, because they're rectangular, displacement tends to work better with square faces. So I'd like to square these up before they get subdivided later on. I'm just gonna throw about three loop, loop cuts in this way with control R and one on the horizontal. And that way the, the individual faces are square-ish. They're not perfectly square, but that's fine. That's good enough. Okay, I'm gonna select it and Alt D to duplicate an instance, sharing the data with the other wall and I'm gonna rotate it on the Z axis by minus 90 degrees and move it excluding the Z axis to this bottom vertex here. And I'm gonna call them wall, both of them. And now we wanna add a fountain to this corner here. Not too big, not too small, not a bathtub, but it's not a pool either. Or well, maybe for the kids it is, but you never know. Let's add a cube. With a cube, I'm going to leave the X axis dimension, scale the Y down to about 1400, and the Z to half that to about 700. Let's move it up and into this corner. Apply the scale. And now I want to give this corner here a nice radius, so nice and round over here. So I'm going to tab into edit mode, select this edge, control B to bevel. And I'm going to give it about 20 seconds. And then here in my last operations panel, I can define the radius. And I think about 1200 millimeters works pretty good. It doesn't have to be too precise. And now we can take our main face on the top, inset it until we have a nice wall thickness. And we're gonna 
fix this overlap here in a second before we do anything else. I'm going to take these two vertices and move them on the X axis to somewhere close to the other edge. And then I select these two, the Y, move them up there. And that's good enough. We're going to move it a little into the walls so we don't see the surfaces of that, that side and that side. First, I'm going to select this face and extrude it down. That already looks good. And then as we did before, because we have going to have displacement and subdiff modifier here too, I'm going to square up the faces. I'll add a couple loop cuts there. And there. That's about square-ish. And just scroll up until you have about square faces. On the fountain itself, I'm not too concerned about anything that happens over here. Just, I am going to move this slightly into the wall because I don't want to see anything of this. So again, subdivision surface, do simple and adaptive. And that's pretty much all we got to do here. Now, of course, a fountain needs a spout. I want to place somewhere over here. So I'm going to shift right click right there. And this is where I want to add my spout. First, let's rename our fountain to fountain and then Shift A, add another cube. I'm going to click and drag down. Make this 127 millimeters. And on the Y axis, make it 25. Switch over to face select here for a second and move it on the Y. I'm going to apply my scale and then start insetting faces. I'm going to select my main face here and inset it to something like this inset it again wrong i'm gonna extrude it down first and then i'm gonna inset it and then i want to extrude that out so that from here to here and here to here is roughly the same doesn't have to be exact inset this again and then i'm gonna make another inset way smaller and one more to about there in this phase, I'm going to right click and subdivide three times. Right click and loop tools circle. If you don't have loop tools enabled yet, go under edit and preferences. Comes with Blender. Just search for loop tools and activate it right there. And then I'm going to extrude that backwards because this is the part where the water line is connected and the water comes out. And before I deselect anything, I'm going to hit Shift D, cancel the movement and hit P to separate the selection. Go back into object mode and this cube dot one one zero. This is the duplicated faces. I'm going to rename that emitter and hit M new collection water. And this will be our water system later down the line. Down the line. So back to our spout. Go back into face selection. And I'm going to all select this edge. That selects the whole edge loop. I'm going to extrude this out. And I'm just going to select these two and extrude them a little further. 
Now the whole thing is about 116 millimeters deep. I think the real thing is about 106, if I remember correctly. So close enough. So now in object mode, I'm going to rotate this RY by 45 degrees negative. And I'm going to throw a couple of loop cuts in here. Not quite done yet. I'm gonna make one here, one here, so that this phase is about squarish, and another one right here. That looks close enough. Going to face select and control select a path around the mesh so that this loop is selected and we need e to extrude cancel any movement and i'm gonna scale s and i'm gonna shift y so it doesn't grow into the y direction and i'm gonna extrude this out just a bit now the only thing i want to do is bring these vertices on the same level as the other ones here so i'm gonna select these ones and these ones we're still in vertex snapping gz snap over there and i'm gonna scale them on the x-axis just a hair i can hold shift to make it a little slower just so these line up a little better and there we have a nice spout now i'm gonna throw on a bevel modifier do about two millimeters, three segments. I'm gonna shade it smooth and I'm gonna harden the normals. That way, oh, flat faces don't get bent by the bevel modifier and everything looks nice. If you don't like these kind of corners over here, you can switch the geometry in the modifier from miter outer sharp to arc that way it looks a little nicer cool that's our spout last thing i want to do to the modeling part is i want to add a pergola up here so i'm going to bring my cursor shift s back to the origin and then i'm going to shift a add another cube I'm going to scale it on the x-axis if it overlaps that doesn't really matter and on the y-axis we'll go for 80 millimeters and on the z-axis for 190 millimeters and we can move this up here so it sits right on the wall and in top view i'm gonna move it up so it is right where the wall begins now instead of duplicating it a bunch of times i'm gonna apply my scale give it a bevel modifier quickly And then instead of duplicating it, I'm going to put on a, an array modifier. I prefer working with constant values. So I'm going to cancel the X movement out and move it on the Y axis by about 600 millimeters. But I got to make that negative. So I'll go in the right direction. And that just worked out fine for this scene in my rehearsals. Bring up the count so we're about there we can always change this later depending on our camera settings but this is basically the modeling part and now we can move on to lighting and other things at this stage we should probably save our file always a good idea save as record now before we get to texturing i'd like to get the uh, lighting set up. And all I really wanna do here is uh, put a sky texture in. I'm gonna open my shader editor down here and switch it to world. And I'm gonna drag a noodle out of this color. And there is my sky texture already. Let's switch to rendered view. And this is 
Right, go into my render properties and bring the, the exposure down a little bit. So what I want to do here is I want the lighting to come in on a bit of an angle from this direction. So I'm going to rotate the sky texture. So I see something that I like and because it's going to be midday, the sun is going to be very high up. Mm. I want some shadow there. And what I don't want is shadow over the spout. Something like that actually looks pretty good. We can always adjust it later on once the scene is built with our camera. Speaking of which, I'm gonna hit Shift A and add a camera and hit M for a new collection and call this render. I like to keep the camera separate. And I'm gonna hit Control Alt Numpad Zero to bring the camera to my current view. And I like to keep the walls straight. So I'm going to set the X rotation to 90 on the camera. I'm going to lock that in and I'm going to lock my camera to my view to bring it up till I see on the Z location that it's about the height of eye level, roughly around there. Now I'm going to go into my camera settings in the viewport display and bring my pass by two up. So I don't see what's going on outside the camera. And adjust my focal length a little bit. We're about 39-ish. And I'm gonna shift my y-axis down a bit. That way I see more of my scene without getting the walls out of plumb. I can still move my camera around, keeping an eye on the z-axis. I wanna see some of both walls. And I want to have the fountain in the lower third of this area here. This looks pretty good to me, actually. And with that, the lighting setup is done. Now we can move on to texturing. So let's go into the viewport shading for the time being. Oops. Unlock the camera from view, otherwise you screw it up. Let's start with the ground texture. I'm going to go back into my shader editor. For this project, the mo most of the textures come from polyhaven.com. And I'm going to put a link to all of them in the description. I've already downloaded all of them and set them up in my asset browser. So I can just drag and drop them in. But I'm going to show you how to set up one of them. And then the rest of them I'm just going to drag and drop. So I'm going to hit new on the ground and give this material. Call it slate. And then with node wrangler add-on enabled as usual edit preferences add-ons node wrangler i'm gonna select the principal bsdf hit Control shift t and i'm gonna browse to my material select textures that i want included and hit principal texture setup and that will already set up my texture the way it needs to be except that it doesn't include the ao so to include that one we got to shift a add a mix color node. Hook that between the base color and the base color. Get the ambient occlusion in slot B. Switch over to multiply and bring the factor all the way up. Now, because this is a standard plane and it's still square, we don't have to do any unwrapping or anything. We can just leave it as is. It looks pretty good. And in terms of displacement, we have to go back into rendered view uh, because it's a floor i don't want to have too much displacement on there so i'm just gonna switch to 0.05 something like that 0.05 not 0.05 what am i doing something like that okay so let's drag the other ones in open a new window here and switch it to the asset browser that's all my materials and i'm gonna go for a rock wall drop that onto the walls now because the shape of this wall is different than the standard wall not oh, the standard plane i'm just gonna go into face select and you unwrap this quickly 
switch over to our UV editing. Da, 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 da. Ooh, I like this. I think I'm going to work with the scale a little. I can drag down and how about two? Mm, maybe a little more. Two and a half. I would like it more if it maybe rotated. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Now here, problem is that the AO doesn't have the vector plugged in. So I'm just going to drag this in here. And that already looks good for the fountain. And use a different rock wall and on the fountain we have to be a little more diligent with our uv unwrapping i'm going to go back into solid mode and into local view hitting shift on the number pad and i'm going to tap into edit mode and first i'm going to select all these edge loops here by alt shift clicking them but I don't want, no, I don't want this one. Because these ones I want to have continuous. So I'm going to right click them and mark them as a seam. Select all the faces and hit U, unwrap. Now if I switch over to my UV editing, it's going to look like this. Switch that over to the hues. And all I really concern myself with is these ones here, which is this island. So I'm going to select one of them and hit L to select all the linked ones. And I'm going to use an add-on that I got on GitHub called UV squares, link in the description. And with that selected, I can just hit to square grid and that will square it all up. And that way everything runs over the edge nicely and the stones will actually follow the curvature. I'm going to select everything here and rotate it by minus 90. Again, I'm only concerning myself with these ones here. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, this is way too big. So again, in the mapping node, click and drag. And just scale it till we see something that we like. Maybe the two and a half that we had on the wall is good for this one too. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Now, do I like the transition here on the stones? Not quite. So, so I can again, L select these ones here. And I can move them around the hair. So I have them in a position that I like. Turn the overlays off here for a second. And go maybe into rendered view so we actually see the displacement. That looks pretty good. See it again here. Go into camera view. But I'm I still see some of it on this wall here. So I'm gonna select it and hit GX and just move it over ever so slightly till it completely disappears. That looks pretty good. Okay, one more texture, and that is our pergola. And for that, I'm going to use a wood texture, something dark, something like that. These ones are not UV unwrapped yet, so I'm just going to select the four end faces on both sides and edges, I mean, and one along the top. Mark them as a seam. I got to select all the faces though. U unwrap. Of course, it's the wrong way. I'm going to select all of them and rotate them by 90 degrees. And again, well, this one doesn't even have a mapping node. Oh, cool. I'm going to select one of the textures and hit control T and then I'm alt right clicking and dragging over and that will just lazy connect. I love it. Lazy connect all the, the vectors. So everything works fine and I'm just gonna scale this up something like that make it safe next I want to create a, a simple copper material for the spout so I'm gonna hit new for a new material and call it copper and this one's just gonna be a very simple material uh, you won't see much of it in the end so I'm gonna keep it fairly simple um, I'm going to 
add a mix RGB or mix color. And for the color, I'm going to a website. It's called physical base, something like that. Physically base.info. It's a website where you can get all kinds of RGB values and IOR values for different materials. And I can just look up copper. And this gives me a base color hex value and a specular color hex value. So I can just copy that into here. And I'm going to do the same thing for the specular. And I'm going to just click, drag it onto the bottom one and make this slightly darker and a little more red. And that result I'm going to drag into the base color and I'm going to add an ambient occlusion node and a color ramp. Drag the color into the factor and shift click to preview this the distance i'm going to drag down a little so what that does is it gives me some lighter and darker areas and i can use the color ramp to dial that into something that i like i can even add another flag make this a little bit darker and just dial that in a little bit and then I can use that as the mix factor for the two colors. And that makes it a little more interesting. Now it still looks weird. And that's because I haven't added the metallic yet. And I'm also going to bring the roughness down. And now all of a sudden it looks like copper. Now to give this a little more detail, I'm going to add a noise texture and another color ramp. Noise check texture, I'm going to give the object coordinate. And preview the color ramp and I'm going to bring the scale way up to like 200 or something. Actually, I'm not going to use the, the object coordinate. I'm going to use UV. I'm going to go into face mode, select everything, hit U and do a smart UV project. And then I can start scaling the X axis maybe. Yeah. And that way it gives me this stripy pattern if I dial the color ramp in now a little. It almost looks a little bit brushed. Just till I have a very fine pattern, I'm just gonna make the dark one a lot, uh, the, the white one a lot darker this in a little more i'm going to drag this into the roughness and i'll just break up the reflections a little bit and also get set the anisotropy to one and maybe use this as a bump map too Drag the color into the height and the normal into the normal and give this a very minimal distance and strength and then I can always get a hue saturation value node in here. If I find this is too light, I can make it a little bit darker. And also drag this into the greenish area a little. Make it look like it's not super new. But again, from camera view, we don't see that much of it. So this is already overkill in my opinion here. So let's just leave it at that. By the time we put the water in and everything, we won't see much of it anymore. So the last thing I want to do to the textures is add some dirt and grime into all the corners and creases. And then I'm going to do with another ambient occlusion. So let's start with the wall. I'm going to add a ambient occlusion node and our trusty color ramp. Preview this. And that way all those contact areas can get a little bit of grime and I can dial that in with a third flag. This 
especially in these in areas where you have water contact and all that there's going to be dirt and grime so in the way we're going to mix this in is by taking another mix color node set to multiply and dragging the color into slot b and then we can play with the factor to add more or less and we can also keep playing with the color ramp so especially around the fountain i like to add a little more something like that looks pretty decent so now i'm just gonna shift select these three nodes control c add them to the fountain material drag this color into a and connect it there and maybe dial it back a little on this here and for the floor i'm gonna do the same thing one more time drag these over here plug this in you can always shift select it and preview it and then that way dial it in a little maybe i take a little bit out of very dark out of the floor the floor is easy to mop it's a little cleaner and with that we have a basic scene setup make another safe and now it's time to fill this scene with stuff because the world is full of well stuff so let's add stuff I want to add some plants first and there again you can go over to Polyhaven and look for plants and there's a whole bunch of them I like these potted plants for this that's what I'm going to use and I've used them before so I already have them in my asset browser again and just drop them in where are my plants um, potted there we go gonna go out of camera view for a sec here so i'm gonna get this one in here and snap them to the ground and move them in place i'm gonna get this pergola out of the way for the time being after renaming it to pergola i'm gonna rotate this on the z-axis a little bit park it somewhere here and the other plant here i think we're gonna have to adjust our camera angle a little bit yeah it looks about good unlock it again now i want to reuse the uh the pot and the dirt but because it's a collection i can't do it so i'm gonna go under file append and i'm gonna find my plant which is the uh potted plant o2 and I'm just gonna grab the pot and the dirt objects and append those. I'm gonna move this over here and I'm gonna scale it up. And I'm gonna put a different bush in there. I would love to put a link to those ones into the description too, but I've had them around for quite a long time now and I can't remember for the life of me where I found them. So sorry about that but it's a nice bush to have here it just looks nice in that corner i find again sorry i don't know where i got them anymore it's been too long all right next i want to put a table and a couple of chairs here and these ones i also got from polyhaven origins on these ones are a little weird though so i'm just going to park the origin at the bottom I'm going to make a link duplicate with Alt-D. Now the only thing I don't like about them is that they're, they have this light colored wood on them and it kind of blends in with everything else. And again, these are a little weird the way the texture is set up because there's only one material on there and it seems to cover everything. So I'm just going to select all these faces plus and give it the same material but then make a duplicate out of it and just call it dark and I'm gonna pop over to my shader editor and just throw in a hue saturation value node into the main color 
and drag the value all the way down. I have to hit assign though, otherwise it doesn't work. It's gonna bring this down to about 0.01. It looks a little different than the background. Now I have to do the same thing for the table. Again, they are a little weird when it comes to that. Cool. Now I'm gonna throw a fruits on there throw an apple in there and a lime maybe they're a little overlapping unless you have a close-up shot planned of this shouldn't be too bad but this is certainly an area where you should do however you want it be creative with it look for different assets maybe check blender kit and because it's a siesta, for a siesta you need some wine. There's some wine glasses and stuff on polyhaven.com or you grab them from Blender Kit or wherever. I'm gonna use eye mesh. Again, this is the area where you have to be creative or I encourage you to be creative to make the scene look nice. So I'm just gonna grab everything that is not architecture and move it to a new collection decorations plants i'm gonna move to a new collection called plants just to keep organized here okay now i'm gonna put some hanging ivy on the walls now i get these ones from imesh too I'm pretty sure there's something like that on blender kit or you could work with bag of pie which we're gonna do in a minute anyway So let's bring our pergola black for a sec here and i'm going to use the bagapie add-on to add some ivy to the pergola so i'm going to select my pergola and hit j and hit ivy and this is going to add a cylinder shaped ivy to the object so i'm just gonna center it about there and then i'm gonna rotate it on the x axis by 90 and scale it till it covers everything now this is way too dense though i can play with the scale and the density and everything in the in the modifier sub section here so let's start with the density of about 25 bring the resolution down a little now this will look a little funky here because there's all kinds of holes in there but in the shade and just here it doesn't look too bad maybe add a little bit more Find something that you like. Bring the scale down a little and maybe the density up a little more. Just till you find a nice ratio of shade and plant and there is stuff hanging close to the camera that'll be blurred out by the depth of field, which will actually have a nice effect later on. So that's pretty good. These two, we can just move down and out of sight. I think I'm gonna leave it at about this. That looks pretty good. Not too overgrown, but it gives nice shade. So I played around with the loops a little more and with the resolution and I like this a lot a little better. So these are the very settings I ended up with. So now it's finally time for the fun stuff and that is the water simulation. Let's go into solid view for the time being. Uh, I'm gonna hide the bag of pie and the pergola for the time being just to have everything out of the way in a clear view here. So Let's find our water collection and open it. And I'm just gonna bring that emitter down to the front. And I'm gonna make sure that the origin is actually on the plane. So I'm gonna go to object, set origin to geometry. And I'm also gonna make sure that the face orientation is correct, which it is. So with our emitter selected, I'm gonna go into the particles tab and hit plus and I'm gonna rename that to water. Under render settings, I'm gonna change the render as from halo to object. Now we don't have an object yet, so let's go somewhere where we won't see it. Put our cursor there and activate the water collection. Make it the active one and add a meta ball and scale it down. That was big. So now we can go back to our emitter and 
select our meta ball as the emitted object. So now if we bring up a timeline here, whoop, timeline, and start playing, we can see something spitting out, but it's not much yet. So let's adjust the scale here a little, and then we can start seeing something. Which is way too big though. I want to have it small, so I'm going to bring the number from 1,000 to about 75,000. Now we're getting somewhere. Scale down about to about 1.1 or something. Maybe 1.2. Now we got to play around with the lifetime of the simulation. So first and foremost, we have 250 frames set in our timeline, but the emission ends at 200. So we're going to change this to 250. Actually, I'm going to change it to 300. So it lives on after the, uh, the animation is over. And then I can bring the lifetime of them down. So because right now it's puking all the way down here, which is unnecessary. They can finish somewhere below the water surface. So let's dial that back while the simulation is running until we see them disappear. Somewhere around 10-ish should be good. That way they stop being emitted right after they enter the water surface. Speaking of which, let's add a water surface. So for that, we're gonna bring our cursor over here and add a plane and we're gonna size it to something that fits into the well. Let's go in wireframe mode so we can actually see what we're doing here. So let's bring these here. If it's overlapping here and there a little bit, that's okay. We just wanna make sure that it's inside the walls. Now we're gonna select everything and put a loop cut here. Actually, I'm gonna put two in there. Again, we want to have square faces and adaptive subdivision here would not work because we need a constant amount of high poly geometry. So I'm going to select everything and hit right click subdivide and I'm going to type in 100. So we have lots and lots of geometry. Deselect everything, hit C for circle select and just select all the vertices that we don't need. Hit X to delete the vertices. And there's our water surface. Use that to bring it up somewhere there. And now to make that water actually ripple, once the, the stream of water out of the spout hits it, we're gonna go under physics and add dynamic paint, set to canvas, add a new canvas and the surface type to waves and we're going to play with the uh with the settings in a minute here with the speed and the the influence radius but first we need something to hit it so we're going to go back to our emitter and add dynamic paint there and switch the type to brush add a new brush and switch the source from mesh volume to particle system and select our water I believe we renamed, but it didn't take. Okay, so let's see what happens. Boom, we have water. Now let's go back in to our water surface and I think they're a little too fast. So let's dial it down to half of it. And that already looks a little better. I can adjust my particle settings, play with the scale so I get a somewhat steady scream. Stream, not scream. What? Something like that. And now I can move this back a little. Now if I were to move it back there, it goes through the spout. But we can remedy that one too because we can just tell the spout that it's a collision object and that way if we move our emitter back let me 
grab the emitter. We start getting a little more splashiness, which has a big effect on the water simulation here too. It'll slow it down, but it makes it look a little nicer. Scale the influence back a little. And now if you want it, you could add another meta ball right behind it. It's giant right now, so let's just scale it down. Scale it down so it fits in the hole, move it forward a little. And that way it'll merge with our particle system. And we have a beautiful stream. And depending on how much of that splashiness you actually want, you can move the emitter back and forth and that'll give you more or less of that splash. Cool. Let's see what it looks like in rendered view or in material, material preview. It's a little faster. So now you probably say, hey, great job, Sasha. Now we have white goop coming out of it. It's almost like yogurt or milk or something. Well, you're right. We gotta create a material for the water. So. Let's stop the animation and go into our rendered view and switch back to the shader editor. Over to object and select our water, give it a new material and call that water. So I'm going to get rid of the principal BSDF. Now it's going to turn black because it doesn't have a material anymore. So. I'm going to shift A, add a glass material and a transparent ESDF and a mix shade. I'm going to plug these in. I'm going to give the glass BSDF an IOR value of 1.33, which is the physically correct value for water. I'm going to plug that into the surface. I'm also going to shade it smooth. Now, it's it looks very transparent because it's missing one critical component. And as somebody once famously said, everything has Fresnel. Fresnel, if you don't know, basically, without getting too technical, defines how much of a reflection you get depending on the viewing angle to a surface. So if you look at a, at a very flat angle onto the surface, you get more reflection than when you look onto a steep angle. And we can simulate that here with a Fresnel node. And we're going to use that as the factor for the mix and watch what happens. Boom. Now we have some, something realistic. So now we give our meta ball the same material. I'm just gonna give the emitter that material too, and that way it won't be visible. There we go. It's a little slow. Maybe I can use my denoiser. There we go. It looks pretty good. And just like that, you have created a beautifully realistic water without even touching that frustrating fluid simulation that is built into Blender. Every time you change one setting, everything breaks and you just have to start all over again. I, I'm not a fan. So now we can go and bake all of our physics. If we go on to, under the uh, particle system, cache, we can use disk cache. We can bake all of our dynamics here and it's gonna just run through the simulation once. If you don't bake it, it's just a temporary bake and it's not going to show up properly in the render sometimes. So we'll just bake everything and that way it runs smoothly. I'm just going to stop it somewhere there. Go back into my camera view and bring everything back. Back into rendered view. See if I want to make any final adjustments. But that looks pretty good to me. So one thing we can do for atmosphere, which I'm going to put into the render collection. Add a cube. I'm going to scale it up so it encompasses everything. And under 
object data properties in the viewport display i'm just gonna set it to bounds so that when we're in in solid view all we see is that that outer boundary of that box as a material because it's a standard cube it has that default material i'm just gonna click new and call it volume i'm gonna get rid of the principal bsdf and add a volume scatter and plug that into the volume now i just gotta bring the density way down to 0 0.002 or something i just wanted to have a very subtle effect so there is like a little bit of haze in the air it'll just add a little more to the to the overall scene now let's look at our render settings here quickly after we did another save so go under our render settings uh we are at 1920 by 1080 i want to render it at 200 percent to make it 4k png is fine i don't need an alpha channel i'm gonna go into i'm gonna use very low threshold but i can keep it down to 256 samples because it's a very bright scene there won't be too much noise uh, i'm still gonna activate the denoiser i don't need the light tree here i'm gonna bring all my bounces to about 12. don't want any light clamping mm, caustics volume all that is fine agx and high contrast looks very good to me exposure we can play with a little but somewhere around minus 1.1 looks pretty good to me before we render though we gotta activate depth of field in our camera settings very important one just gonna focus it on maybe this chair and i'm gonna play with the f-stop can even do that in solid view if i activate depth of field here i'm just gonna bring the f-spot f-stop down to 1.5 1 1 1.6 1.5 is reasonable just so that the ivy in the foreground is a little blurred out but everything else is nice and sharp and that should give us a, a nice little frame okay that should pretty much do it for the render settings and go back into solid view and hit f12 to render cool a good minute later we're there and i think that looks pretty good now as for compositing personally I do not do a lot of compositing in Blender on scenes like this. I usually drop it right into Affinity Photo and do it from there. I just find I have a lot more control about certain colors and all the, the little aspects that I want to manipulate. It just gives me a little more flexibility. Uh, Photo P online does the same thing for, for free or GIMP or just don't use adobe uh if you if you wanted to do something here um what i would suggest is throwing on a little film grain which i would do with a texture and then we would have to create one here click on new go on clouds and bring the grain size to something very very small something like that and maybe use the color and then we can use that here and for the scale along the x-axis we would have to be 1920 divided by 1080 so we have the right aspect ratio and then we could get a mix color node drop this in here set to overlay and then you can dial the factor to something of your liking but again that is something i prefer to do in an external photo editor it gives me so much more flexibility so i don't go too much more into this if you were to render an animation keep in mind that you want to offset the z value of this texture of this film grain so it's not a static film grain over an animation that would look weird so all you got to do is in the z value of the offset hit hashtag frame and that way with each frame it gets offset and moves with the animation looks a lot better 
Now, the one thing you can add to your scene to give it another little oomph in realism is, especially in summer, everywhere you go, there's dust flying around and particles and pollen and all kinds of stuff. So you could simulate that with setting up a particle system with an icosphere or something like that. I personally like to set it up with uh, Creative Shrimp's Dust Particles add-on. You can get the basic version for free on Blender Market. Uh, the pro version, I think it's 10 bucks right now. Don't quote me on that, but I think it is. Uh, I find it's well worth it. So all you gotta do is basically append what's in the file that comes with the add-on. So you append this and it is already set up. All you gotta do, scale it into your scene. So it fills it up and then under the modifiers tab based on geometry nodes you can get the density up the amount you can make it way overkill and get the scale down of the object and if we go into rendered view it just adds a little something so i would just take the emission strengths way down for the dust about one or something and maybe drag the amount down a little too not too much and then you can also animate that and have it floating around way too fast out of the box you can make it very slow it's just hard to see in the in the viewport but you can just have those little particles flying around and it just adds so much realism to your whole scene when there's stuff flying around it's just that little extra kick to the whole result and that's it we've created a beautiful summer mediterranean scene with a little fountain in the corner and a nice realistic water simulation that doesn't require a simulation it's just particle system with a meta ball so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and hopefully learned something and don't forget to give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to the channel and now if you need a real pool rather than just a little fountain you gotta watch this video thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time